what's good everyone? Lil Grass Man here. Today's episode I'm going to talk about the proper way to set machine speed to ensure a nice and consistent cut. There's basically there's three things that control machine speed. One of them is your engine speed or engine RPM. If you have a battery power machine, I'll talk about that here in a minute. The second one is your transmission control lever. And the third one is your foot pedal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about each one individually. Then at the end, I'll wrap it all together and put a nice little bill on top. For your battery and electric operators, I'm not sure how one drives. I've never driven one before. I'm sure there's a lot of similarities. This video may not be for you. I suggest you go mop a locker room and hit the garbages on the way back. Before we get into controls right here, I want to talk about how the Zamboni is set up, namely how it differs in how a car drives. So when you drive a car, you put your foot on the gas, the engine RPMs go up, and your speed goes up. You take your foot off the gas, your engine RPMs go down, and your speed goes down. So your engine RPMs, your speed, are tied together when you drive a car. Now at the Zamboni right here, since you've got these conveyors that have to move snow from the ice up to the tank, if it was set up like a car and it was tied in with the, with the conveyors or tied in with engine RPM, when you slow down for corners and make turns, your augers would also slow down. Now that inhibit the machine's ability to bring snow from the ice up to the tank if the augers or the conveyors slow down. Since the conveyors are tied in with engine speed, there's got to be a way to slow the machine down without slowing engine RPM down. And that's achieved through a hydrostatic transmission, which I'll talk about that more here in a minute. I want to talk about the foot pedal and the lever right here. But before that, I want to talk about setting the engine RPM. RPM because that's the first step of the equation. Okay, so setting engine speed or engine RPM. On this machine right here, the 546, there's a rocker switch that's used to set engine speed or engine RPM. On the old 500, there's a lever that's used that's connected to a cable and a carburetor, as well as a mechanical governor that helps maintain the engine speed by adding fuel or taking away fuel. But newer machines have electronic governors, electronic throttles to help maintain engine speed. Basically, the computer senses load and increases the RPM by adding fuel. Even though the engine senses load, the engine does operate independent of load, which I get to here in a minute. But setting the engine speed during the ice resurfacing, how I see it, if I start the engine up, I want to take the RPMs to have around 15, say 16, 1700 RPMs, just to have it idling. If I go to move the machine or do any kind of flooding just with the towel, just dragging the towel, I'm up around 2000 RPMs. For ice resurfacings, I usually do an ice resurfacing at around 2,500 to 2,600 RPMs. Increasing your engine RPM or engine speed will increase vehicle speed, but it's not really what it's meant for. That's where the transmission control lever and the foot pedal comes in. But before talking about the foot pedal, let's go ahead and talk about the transmission control lever. That's kind of like the next step of the equation. All right, transmission control lever. This lever right here not only controls direction of travel, either forward or reverse, Machine speed is also controlled by how far from neutral this lever is set. So the further you go from neutral, either reverse or forward, the more faster or more powerful the machine is going to be. When you're moving this lever back and forth, you're actually moving a swash plate and pistons inside of a cylinder. And that's kind of where the hydrostatic comes in. And I can't get too much detail how it works because I don't really know a whole lot about it. And it's kind of out of the scope of this video. But in the description below, I'll leave some links to videos that kind of show some animation that kind of describes it a little bit better than I can. But really basically a hydrostatic transmission is a fluid power transmission with infinite variable control that's independent of engine speed. And when you're moving this lever back and forth, you're actually changing the swash plate angle and that angle of the swash plate determines how much fluid is moving. And with the Zamboni here, when you're moving this lever forward, the swash plate angle changes one way and we're moving it to the neutral position. The swash plate's right here and you gotta imagine there's pistons connected to the swash plate and we're moving it back this way then the swash plate's at a different angle. And the angle of the swash plate determines how much fluid is moving through the system. So the max setting, say here in, in forward, max setting equals max swash plate angle which equals max fluid movement. And decreasing the angle of the swash plate decreases the amount of fluid moving, reducing the power. And for the Zamboni, moving this lever back towards neutral reduces the transmission power, slowing the machine down. And that's how a hydrostatic transmission can act as a braking system. As far as how I set this lever right here, for general ice resurfacing, what I do is I set this lever in such a way that I have my foot all the way down when I make my passes up the middle of the ice. Which kind of leads into the final part of the equation, the foot puddle right here. So the foot pedal right here, basically the foot pedal controls the amount of power to apply from the transmission. The lever right here sets the power and the pedal right there releases the power in a sense. So basically the more pedal you have, the more power and less pedal you have, the less power. And again, that's how a hydrostatic transmission can act as a braking system. When you take your foot off the pedal, it will come to a stop. 
And it's one thing to note, when you set this lever, if you set this lever barely like right here, you're gonna have to put your foot all the way down before it engages. And if you put the lever all the way forward, and the same thing in reverse, but if you barely put your foot on the pedal, it's gonna start jumping forward on you. So it's one thing to note that if you have this thing jam forward, it's just gonna rock it off on you, as well as come to a roar and stop. But if you have it backed off here, then you can actually press the pedal in quite a bit before the system engages. And as far as it slowing down and stopping, and the brake right here, I kind of call this right here the oh shit brake, because I, I only really have gone to it in an oh shit moment, like when you're sliding towards the boards or something. But other than that, it's not gonna do any good because when you take your foot off the pedal there, the machine comes to a stop. So that's kind of not really necessary. It's probably just required. Emergency brake is, I say, required because the machine, if on a hill, will roll down or roll on you. So you definitely want to engage the emergency brake if you're in, on any kind of hill. But to kind of wrap everything all up, when I set the engine speed, I set the engine speed to about 2,500 RPMs for ice resurfacing, 2,000 if I'm doing any kind of floods or moving the machine around, and just over 1,500 just kind of have an idling. For ice resurfacing, 2,500 and setting the transmission lever. Again, I set it in such a way so my foot's all the way down when I'm making my passes up the center of the ice. When I'm churning for the corners or making turns, I kind of back off the pedal. Then I'm coming out of the churn, I put it all the way down. So it's it's so when I'm out of the churn, it's my foot's all the way down. <laughs> then I'm going up the center of the ice with the same amount of speed, laying it in the same amount of water, and taking up the same amount of ice if I have the blade set appropriately. And if you want to slow down and lay more water or flood in, you can always back it off a little bit. But again, keeping your foot all the way down because let's say you have it you have it set way up there, and you're just going to flood the ice, and you're slowing it down with your foot right there, and you're making your passes up the middle, and you kind of slow down more to make your churn. When you come up to make your passes up the center of the ice, your foot could be in a little slightly different position. So it's just better to have this set in such a way so when you're going up the center of the ice, your straight pattern, you have your foot all the way down. If you want to go faster or slower, to set your transmission control lever accordingly. Just don't have it so far forward that you have to have your foot off every time you go up to the center of the ice because you're gonna to have to have it, in, you know, and maybe you can have it in the same position, relative same position, but for maximum consistency, you want your foot all the way down and setting this to the appropriate speed. And one last thing to note right here, there is a neutral safety switch. So if you have the pedal down and this thing out of neutral, the engine won't start because in this scenario right here, if I have the foot down, let's say you treat it like a car and you, you know, some dumb tries to give it gas or someone who doesn't know and you go to start it in this scenario right here it would lurch forward on you so there's a neutral safety switch that won't allow you to start the engine in this configuration right here if you have it neutral here i believe it will let you start if you have to pedal down um, actually no if you have it in this configuration it won't let you start but if you have it in this configuration it, it will let you start it this configuration no go this configuration no go but you're good to go to start it in this configuration. It won't let you do it in those other configurations, is basically what I'm saying. You should, I always store the, the machine in neutral when I'm off the machine. I don't think it makes a big difference because I put the conditioner on the ground. It's not going to roll anywhere. It's on a flat surface. But anyway, I think that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope you learned something. And like the localized man says, stay cool.